Hello, I'm Hugh and this is News for Scotland's summary of the BBC election debate which took place last Friday on the 7th of June. At the same time as the England and Scotland teams played their Euro-friendly warm-ups. It's two each for Scotland and Finland, by the way. The debate was hosted by Michel Hussain, representing the parties Stephen Flynn from the SNP, uh, Ruth Abbey-Yoweth from the Plaid Cymru, Penny Mordaunt from the Conservatives, Angela Rayner, Labour, Nigel Farage for Reform, Carla Denyer of the Green Party England and Wales and Daisy Cooper for the Lib Dems. This report comes from Jeanette from the News for Scotland team and she says don't worry if you don't watch the BBC. I don't but we'll take one for the team and do a report and that's another Friday night gone doing the toilet she says watching Farage. Uh, things we do so you don't have to. Apparently, Jeanette tells me, the first question was security, who will defend the nation? Angela Rayner says that Labour will keep the nuclear deterrent here and also keep the Tories' arms budget. Uh, Cooper for the Lib Dems also wants to keep the nukes and the arms budget but says more should be spent on the homes for our soldiers. Uh, her grandfather was a veteran, would have found their housing situation unacceptable. Farage agreed we're not spending enough, we need to respect our veterans. He says that Sunak leaving the D-Day events last week was a disgrace. Penny Mordaunt again agrees that Sunak should not have left, but he has apologised. The Tories, she says, will spend more on defence and we must need to. We must be prepared to use those nuclear weapons. Denyer says a veteran struggle with mental health and homelessness and we should support them more. That's the Green Party rep. Climate change, she said, is a big threat too, and she was stopped by the presenter who brought the debate, the debate back to arms. But the Greens, of course, point out that climate change also threatens our security. Stephen Flynn is absolutely against nuclear arms in Scotland. We need a modern conventional army, he says, and Trident is a waste of money. He also agrees we should look after veterans and that Sunak's behaviour was a disgrace. Abiyawith again says more or less the same thing, but we don't, we shouldn't make the DD celebrations something political. Next question was about NHS, how to fund it, from a young girl about to go and study medicine. Cooper Liberals says fix the front door, more GPs, more mental health care, free personal care, fix dentist free debt, more funding to pay for it. Of course, a lot of this applies to England and Wales. The personal care is already free here. Stephen Flynn says that, um, well, first of all, he defends the Scottish Health Service, he says there's been no strikes here this year. And he also says that students like the young lady would not have to pay tuition fees if she was studying medicine in Scotland. The presenter asked Flynn about accident and emergency waiting lists in Scotland. He says it's true they are bigger, but they're no worse than anywhere else in Scotland. Maybe we need to do a special on that. There's a lot of statistics there we need to argue. Anyway, Flynn says any cutbacks um, have their origin in Westminster. He thinks Labour have a funding gap of 18 billion in their figures and how is that going to be filled, he asks. Angela Rayner says we've seen a decimation of the NHS and social care and she wants to close non-DOM tax loopholes to fund the NHS. Penny Mordaunt says Labour in Wales has cut the budget, not the Tories. Apiawith says healthcare must remain free at the point of need and not be privatised. He says Labour will do that and we need better workforce planning. Farage says that the NHS model isn't working. Money isn't the answer. In Scotland he says the NHS is badly run. I think that needs to be fact checked. Uh, Cooper for the Lib Dems says NHS has been underfunded for decades. The answer is not to allow big corporations in. Uh, healthcare must be linked to social care and we need to reform the tax system to pay for it. Millionaires and billionaires need to provide funding. The next question was about immigration. Stephen Flynn for the SNP, new migrants are essential to our business and public services. Scotland has a de declining working age population and we need migrants. There's been, he says, a race to the bottom on migration, pushed by Farage, followed by the Tories and Labour. We've been let down the garden path by the right wing far too long, he said, uh, to applause. Farage says we are being swamped. He blames migrants on making us poorer, causing housing problems and even causing road problems. We need to get immigration down, apparently, to deal with these. Apiawith says, um, let's change the tone, change the bigotry from Tories and Labour. They're both the same, he says. More processing is needed, more safe passage for migrants, and they are needed for the economy. Penny Mordaunt says we will cut your taxes and cut immigration. It is too high, she says, but 
what number is too high. But she says Tories have a clear plan to bring it down, though they haven't brought it down yet. Labour, she says, has no clue and you will have uncontrolled immigration under Labour, Angela Rayner says. Problem, problems like housing, roads, public services is because spending has been decimated by the Tories and nothing to do with migration. So Penny Mordaunt now says, will Labour increase immigration? Labour says we need more training so our people are ready to take on those jobs and therefore there's less economic need for migrant labour to come in. Lib Dems again said that immigration isn't to blame for the erosion of public services, giving handouts to the rich is to blame. Again, she says we should invest in the workforce to fill those skills gaps. Denya for the Greens says it is hard to get a GP or housing, but that's nothing to do with immigration. The next question was on the recent cost of living increases over the last couple of years. App Yowith for uh, Ply Company says, what change will there be if Labour gets in? Both parties are saying the same on spending. Lack of change seems to be the agenda. Angela Rayner says, the trouble is that Sunak crashed the economy. On top of global energy prices going up, we need to nationalise energy. Penny Mordaunt says Britain is outperforming all sorts of countries, including the USA, on the economy. I think that needs to be fact-checked as well. The Greens say some people have done very well, but it doesn't have to be like this. We can't have a green economy. We should remove the cruel two-benefit cap and bring minimum, minimum wage up to 15 quid an hour. Farage says, who is at fault for the cost of living crisis? He says, it's people who are choosing not to work. It's wind farm subsidies. It's the cost of paying for migrants, which ordinary people have to have to pick up. Stephen Flynn says there's been a conspiracy of silence over Brexit to a round of applause. He says that's what's pushing prices up and he accuses Farage of being a snake oil salesman on Brexit. Liberal Democrats say people who, pl who play by the rules don't see why big energy companies should be reaping such huge profits. Incidentally, if you're new to News for Scotland, well, so are we. We began with podcasts last November and switched over just recently to YouTube and the other video channels. If you want to subscribe to um, our YouTube channel by clicking below, we'll let you know whenever we've got a new show coming out. We've got plenty of things planned as soon as we get around to making them. The next question in the debate last week, parties want your vote, but somebody says when you get elected, nothing happens. Penny Morden says we are making progress in this country for the Conservatives. We're giving you cuts to national insurance and other taxes. Well, why not? Labour will put up your taxes, she says. The Tories spent more on furlough in spite of um, the tax cutting, uh, but they want to get back onto the tax, cut, tax cutting agenda as soon as they can. And as a fact check, we have to point out that income taxes have increased under the Tories because they haven't compensated for inflation on your personal allowance. Uh, Farage says that we need PR, proportional representation, to stop politics being boring, a wider selection of parties in Westminster. Angela Rayner says that Labour will not promise anything um, that they cannot fund, and she says Labour will not put up taxes for working people. The Green representative said Labour have cut their climate change commitments, but now we can see the Green Party coming of age. Stephen Flynn says that pledges have been delivered in Scotland, 100,000 children lifted out of poverty by the Scottish child payment, and of course water and rail are privatised and of course free tuition fees. He said that to applause and again asked where is Labour going to get 18 billion from? Further progress he thinks is hampered by Westminster. Ap Yaworth for the Ply Cymru says we need honesty and fairness in politics. He says how can you drive taxes down and at the same time have good quality public services. Fairness, why should Sunak play, peanut play, Sunak plays less tax on his investment income than most people in the country do? He says what people want is fairness. Cooper for Lib Dem says um, after promise after, tor after promise of the Tories uh, hasn't been fulfilled, what happened to those 40 hospitals Johnson was going to build? She was reminded by the presenter that liber Liberals changed their mind on tuition fees. Uh, previous government. Farage says environmental policy is impossible. It's an affordable uh, massacre of the British economy. We need oil and gas, he says, and net zero is impossible. The Greens again said that Tories and Labour have been rolling back on their climate policies. Angela Rayner says we do need to have a growing economy but also a green transition. We may need to be self-reliant on energy. 
Stephen Flynn says, yes, it's Scotland's energy you're talking about, not GB energy. He says net zero is necessary in the economy, but the UK needs to invest. Everyone around the world is investing in the new energy systems. Oil and gas isn't going to exist forever, but meanwhile, the Unite Union says that Labour's plans will put a lot of people in the scrap heap. He talks about 100,000 jobs going, but Rayner interrupts to say that there will be more jobs with their green energy policies. The Liberals want to be able to do both at the same time, growth and uh, sustainable growth. Uh, Ap Yowth says more debt pollution is needed in Wales so they can take charge of things like public transport better. Penny Mordaunt says 2050 is too fast for the transition to net zero. Rainer interrupting her again says that GB Energy will bring down bills and help to fill the skills gap. The final question was a knife crime in England, up 8% in the last year. Cooper for the Liberal Dems says that there's an epidemic of nice cr knife crime in her city of Bristol. We need more cops on the street and we need to be tough on crime. Green councillors in, Britain, in Bristol look at the causes of crime. Youth centres closed and lack of services, growing inequality. Farage says we need more stop and search, we need to be tough. It doesn't matter if it's a black area, oh dear, you might be called a racist, he says. We need to go in there and arrest the bad guys. The Lib Dems again said that the cuts to community policing um, are to blame and they're not happy with stop and search. Penny Mordaunt, whoever says that crime is dropping and that Labour, Labour areas have more crime than Conservatives. That's been disputed. Angela Rayner says we need to educate our young people. We need to have more community police officers and she says that Tories have cut the police numbers, whereas Mordaunt says they've increased. Ap Yaworth says the areas with more poverty will suffer more crime. He says we need to look at the education system. And again, he wants more devolution of powers in Wales denied by Labour. The Greens say we need more youth councillors in schools. And again, Angela Rayner agrees with that. Stephen Flynn pointed out that serious knife crime is less in Scotland. The statistics show that. But he does think that Westminster have failed generations of young people with public sector cuts and fears there are more to come. We need to offer young people hope and optimism for the future, he says. Nigel Farage says we need to deal with the stuff at the bottom, deal with drugs, and nobody has the answer to that. The party reps were asked for their final thoughts. Angela Rayner says Labour has a fully costed plan that will bring down waiting lists, create GB energy, employ more teachers and more GPs. Again, most of that doesn't apply to Scotland. Stephen Flynn says we need to rejoin the EU single market. The SNP will put Scotland first. Greens say we're just going to get more of the same from Labour and again we need to protect the NHS from privatisation. Abiyad says we need a different kind of politics and I want to send Labour a message to not ignore Wales. Penny Mordaunt Conservatives again stick with us and we will give you higher taxes although we haven't done it yet and bring down inflation although we haven't done that and bring down immigration though we haven't done that either. The Liberals are going to clean up the rivers and um, make everything better. Farage says politics isn't working. Who speaks for ordinary people? Well, he does. Okay, that was um, a quick summary of the BBC debate last week. At least they didn't forget to put Scottish and Welsh voices in this time. And we've heard that Stephen Flynn did very well. An opinion poll right after the show said that he was by, by far the best performer. You may have heard different but I'm talking about the Scottish bit of the poll, and that's the only bit that the SNP needs to worry about. So thanks for watching. There'll be more from us in the next four weeks on Scotland's place in this UK general election. We're also going to summarise the EU elections, which have just finished while we've been making this show. And we have more topics coming up once we have time to write and produce the shows. We are a not-for-profit company based in Glasgow. We are supported by volunteers, plus a lot of help from our friends. If you would like to help, please join in the debate. We've got a growing mailbag of comments underneath the YouTube channel here. And we are, we are going to respond to all of those. We're going to do a feedback show during the week and we'll discuss your comments and we'll try and uh, get back to you. We'd like to hear from you on today's programme too, so why not add your comment and subscribe at the bottom of this page. To subscribe to the channel and we'll keep in touch. Finally, we've launched a crowdfunding appeal. Again, details will be below. We'll use all the funds we've received to buy new equipment to make more News for Scotland shows. Again, look for information on the links below. 
So thanks for watching this show and we'll be back soon. So goodbye from me, Hugh, and from the News for Scotland team.